So we are going to be looking together into the Municipal Act of Ontario. And when you look into this enactment, you find the following, which is very interesting. It says municipality means a geographic area whose inhabitants are incorporated. When you further look into the Criminal Code of Canada, you find the same thing going on under that code. Municipality includes the corporation of a city, town, village, county, township, parish, or other territorial or local division of a province, the inhabitants of which are incorporated or are entitled to hold property collectively for a public purpose. Now, when you scroll down a little bit further in the Municipal Act of Ontario to Article 2, you find the following. It says, municipality in this act, a reference to municipality is a reference to its geographical area or to the municipal corporation as the context requires. So here we are seeing that there is a distinction, a double capacity. When you use the term municipality, you are either referring to its geographical area, a land location, or you're referring to it as a corporation. Okay. Now, here we're learning also that the inhabitants are incorporated. Well, what are we incorporated into? We are incorporated into the corporation. That's what's going on. So Lawrence and Ed and David and Carrie and Terry and Jerry and Virginia and Alan and Donna and Dwayne and George and Patrick and Al and Mary and anyone else that lives in municipalities, you have been incorporated into the company. You are resident in the company. When you say the word, the municipality of Markham or Toronto, let's say Winnipeg, Coburg, Montreal, this can either mean a corporation or a geographical area. That's what's being declared in these enactments. These municipalities are incorporated into the province of Ontario. The province of Ontario is also a corporation under law. The province of Ontario is a corporation traded on the stock exchange. You can verify that. So Ontario can either mean a geographical location or a corporation, depending on the context. Canada is also a corporation, a company, and Canada is also a geographical location. When we look in the Governor General's Act, we find the following. The Governor General of Canada or other chief executive officer or administrator carrying on the government of Canada on behalf in the name of the sovereign by whatever title is designated, he is a corporation soul. Canada is a corporation. The Governor General is a chief executive officer of this corporation soul. A municipality is a corporation. Ontario is a corporation and Canada is a corporation. So we have several Canadas in our laws and we have several Ontarios or several British Columbias or several Saskatchewans or several Manitobas in our laws. One is of a corporate nature, it's a company, and one is of a territorial nature, it is the land mass. The Supreme Court of Canada has interpreted the word Canada as follows. Supreme Court of Canada, RE, Authority of Parliament in relation to the Upper House. Further, although Section 91.1 gave the Queen the power, with the advice and consent of the Senate and the House of Commons, to alter the Constitution of Canada, except in certain expressly designated areas, it does not confer a power to amend the BNA Act. The word Canada 
in section 91.1 does not refer to Canada as a geographical unit, but refers to the juristic federal unit. Federal juristic unit means legal person, artificial person, or corporation. So when you use the word Canada in certain circumstances, you're talking about a corporation. When you use Canada in other circumstances, you're talking about the territory, the land mass. We, as individuals, have been incorporated into the corporation of our local municipality. The local municipality is incorporated into the provincial, and the provincial is incorporated into the federal. This is all corporation in one hand. So when you look at Cos Carswell's Dictionary of Law, 2nd edition, 1991, it says Canada can mean either the geographic unit, yeah, we've seen that already, or it can mean the juristic federal unit, the corporation. So Canada, Ontario, Manitoba, British Columbia, it refers to, on one hand, the corporation. And we know that the inhabitants are incorporated into this corporation and they are officers working for the company they are incorporated into the company and they are resident in the company on the other hand when you use the term the designation canada ontario manitoba british columbia you can be referring to a territory a geographical location so let us look into the income tax enactment, the federal income tax enactment. We find that it says tax payable by persons resident in Canada. Okay, well, what Canada are they talking about here? Right? We just learned that there's two different Canadas. There's one that is a landmass, that is territorial, and there is one that is a corporation. An income tax shall be paid as required by this act on a taxable income for each taxation year of every person resident in Canada at any time in the year. Well, the Supreme Court just told us that the Canada that's being referred to in Section 91 of the Constitution Act of Canada 1867 refers to the corporation. And this federal income tax enactment flows from that article of law. It's coming from 1867 Constitution Act, Article 91. So the Canada that's being referred to here is 100% the Corporation of Canada. That's what the Supreme Court of Canada said. Now, when you look at the term resident, the word resident, it can mean a person who has residence in a particular place. So when you say the doctor or the nurse, he does his residency at the hospital. So here it says a resident is a person who has residence in a particular place. And the word residence is the place where a corporation or other enterprise does its business. So what they are actually saying here is they're saying that you are resident in Canada, doing business as an officer in Canada for that corporation. The, su the Supreme Court of Canada in Thompson versus Minister of National Revenue made it very clear. He said, nationality is not an ingredient for the purpose of the Act, the Income Tax Act. Residents are tax, not Canadians, but residents within the meaning of the Act. You see, it doesn't matter what the CRA releases as little documentations on the side and their little brochures trying to redefine the word resident. What matters is what the courts have declared. What matters is what the enact, enactment says, and the enactment is bringing forth. And we are clearly seeing that the Canada brought forth in the enactment is the corporation. And the one who is resident in Canada is the officer working for the corporation. Now, when you look at the Ontario Income Tax Act, you find the following. An income tax shall be paid as here and after required for each taxation year by every individual who was resident in Ontario. 
And there it is again. The Ontario that's being talking, spoken about here is the corporation. And the resident that they are talking about is working as officer for the corporation. We find the same thing in the Manitoba enactment. Article 3.1, an individual must pay tax under this part for a taxation year if he or she was resident in Manitoba on the last day of the taxation year. The word resident is not defined in both of these enactments. You must draw your own conclusion. Now, without an understanding as to what's going on, we would automatically assume that the word resident in this article of law means living on the territory. But with the understanding, we see what is actually being declared. A resident in Ontario, Manitoba, British Columbia, or so forth, for or Canada, means working for the corporation of Canada, Ontario. It means federal juristic unit. They are declaring that we are working for the corporation of Canada. Now, when you look into the income tax enactment, the definition section, you find the following. An office means the position of an individual, entitling the individual to a fixed uh, salary and includes a judicial office, the office of a minister of the crown, the office of the member of the Senate of the House of Commons of Canada, a member of the Legislative Assembly, or a member of the Legislative or Executive Council, and any other office, the incumbent of which is elected by popular vo vote, or is elected or appointed in a representative capacity, and also includes the position of a corporation, director, and officer, means a person holding such an office. So, employed in the definition of the federal enactment means performing the duties of an office or employment. An employee includes an officer. The employer in relation to an officer means the person from whom the officer receives the salary. And an employment means the position of the individual in the service of some other person and servant or employee means the person holding such a position. So when you say you are employed under the enactment, it means this. Employed means performing the duties of an office. Okay. Well, the duties of an office we read means that you are a minister, a servant of the crown, or an officer. That's what it said. It gave a definition here. You're a minister, a member of the crown. And then it also said, and an officer means the person who's holding such an office up here. So when you use the term employed, it means the duties of an office. You're a servant or you're an officer. But it also means when you use the term employed, it means employment. So employed means performing the duties of an office or employment. And employment means that you are in service to some other person, either as a servant or an employee. And if you're an employee, then you are an officer. And if you're a servant, then you're an officer because you're serving Her Majesty. They are declaring that we are all officers of Canada working for the Corporation of Canada. Now it goes on to state that Canada as an agent of the province will collect for and on behalf of the province the income taxes imposed under the Provincial Act. The province will, in respect of each year during the term, impose income tax under the Provincial Act in the following manner. So the province will, in respect of each year during the term, maintain, the province will maintain the rate deduction at source from employees' wages in respect of any year in a fixed ratio to the deduction prescribed for that year under Section 1 of Section 153 of the Federal Act. Here it states that Canada, as agent of the province of Ontario, will collect for Ontario the amount of deductions at source from your paycheck when you work every week and then you receive your paycheck 
you're missing money from your paycheck? That's called deductions at source. And here it's stating that Canada, as agent of the province, will deduct this at source from the employees. That's who, that's who the enactment allows them to deduct the money from. Well, hang on a second here, because it says definitions under federal enactment. For the purpose of this act, the Ontario Income Tax Act, except where they are at variance with the definitions contained in this section, the definitions and interpretations contained in or made by regulations under the Federal Act apply. So the employees that they're talking about are the employees from the Federal Enactment, which means what? The officer. So the only one designation that they can withhold from is the designation of employee, which is an officer. The officer is resident in Canada or Ontario. The officer is working. The officer is incorporated into Canada and Ontario. Now they mentioned that you can they mentioned that you're allowed to take source deductions. You can take money off the paycheck every week from the employees. We just saw that the employee has to be the officer or they have no business taking out any money from you. Now they say that you can take this money under section 153 of the federal enactment. So we go look at the federal enactment and it says every person paying at any time in a taxation year, salary or wages, will deduct or withhold from the payment the source deductions. You see, uh, an amount determined in accordance with the prescribed rules and shall, at the prescribed time, remit the amount to the receiver general. So they give you your paycheck and then they take deductions off of your paycheck and they give it to the receiver general. But the rest of this says that we're at the prescribed time the person is a prescribed person, the remittance shall be made to the account of the Receiver General at a designated financial institution. What type of prescribed person are they talking about in the enactment? What type of class of person is being brought forth in this enactment? Who can be, who can be withheld against in this enactment? The Federal Officer, the Officer of Her Majesty. Now it says withholding tax. Provisions of this act requiring a person to deduct or withhold an amount in respect of taxes from amounts payable to a taxpayer are applicable to Her Majesty in right of Canada or a province. Again, we're at the prescribed time. The person is a prescribed person. The remittance shall be made to the account of the Receiver General at a designated financial institution. The only withholding that they are allowed to do is from their employees, from their officers. In their own enactment, they should not be taking off wages from individual men and women. That's why they have to render you, according to the enactment, an officer. Thereby, they can tax you. The only one who can deduct the withholding is Her Majesty in right of Canada, the corporation, or in right of a province, the corporation. And the only one they can deduct from is their employee, the officer. They are abridging fundamental rights and freedoms through this enactment. They have forced individuals into a legal recognition as an officer of Canada. This is against the International Covenants, Article 8.2, and Article 16. This is against the Canadian Constitution Act of Canada, Article 7. And then they subsequently want to declare that you now have what is defined as taxable income under the enactment. Then they further attempt to force individuals to contribute to the economic, social, and cultural development of Canada and the provinces through this designation. Since I am not an officer of Canada, the company, and subsequently not employed as defined within the enactment, I have no obligation to exercise any privilege associated with the social insurance number and have no taxable income. It is only an officer of Canada that must present or use such a card. That is why the participation in the social insurance program is voluntary according to the social insurance application form, a federal enactment on box 13 where it clearly states participation is voluntary. However, through the enactment, 
officers of Canada are forced to subscribe to this program. And it says that every individual who was what? Resident or employed in Canada. So resident, meaning you're working for, part of the company, employed, officer. What Canada are we talking about? The corporation. The Supreme Court of Canada already told us. So if you are resident or an officer in Canada, you have to have a social insurance number. You have no choice. Within 15 days after the individual is requested by the person to provide his social insurance number and apply to the Canadian Employment Insurance Commission in prescribed form and manner for the assignment to the individual of the social insurance number. But however, they say that it's voluntary. You don't have to. You don't have to participate in it. You don't have to have a social insurance number. The only thing in the income tax enactment is the one who is resident, incorporated, working for, the officer of the Corporation of Canada, you must have the social insurance number. The federal government has guaranteed the individuals in this country the choice to freely dispose of their natural wealth and labor without any obligations while guaranteeing that those who do will not be deprived of their own means of subsistence. We have the right to decide if we want to contribute to the economic, social, and cultural development of Canada or of our provinces. But since they're not happy that we have a right to decide, what they went is and did is created enactments that incorporated us <clears throat> into their corporations that changed our legal capacity before the law and caused us to be officers of Canada, thereby forcing us to use social insurance cards and taxing us.